Yo, welcome to episode number two of the Compensate HQ Success Series. In this video, we're going to talk to James, who's done over $100,000 so far with Compensate HQ and over half a million combined with Compensate HQ and Shopify together. So enjoy the episode and I'll see you there. Welcome to episode number two of the Commerce HQ Success Series. Today we have James who has done uh, over 100,000 with Commerce HQ so far and over half a million combined with his Shopify store and Commerce HQ. So James, welcome. Thank you for coming on and speaking to me. Happy to be here, Alan. Nice, man. Nice. So, look, before uh, before we go any further, if you're listening to this uh, video and you don't know anything about Commerce HQ, I will put links in the description so you can check that out. You can have a walk through uh, back in tour of Commerce HQ. You can see the uh, differences between Commerce HQ and Shopify, see why I think it's a better platform and why a lot of other people think so too. And... You can also get free source for the price of one. So all that stuff's in the description. If you want to know anything about it, just go in there and check that out yourself. But with that being said, let's get straight into it and uh, and uh, let's see what we've got to say then, James. So firstly, how did you get into e-commerce? I mean, what's your journey been like, uh, you know, getting into e-commerce and, uh, you know, really up till today? So um, it, it it's a it's a long story that I'll make short. But basically, uh, I spent a lot of time helping my sons, who are 16, 17, and 18 during this time, sell little products that they thought they would uh, try to do from uh, AliExpress, from China, whatever. Uh, it was anything from those fidgety spinners to um, carbon fiber wallets, some things like that. And I was helping them set up the infrastructure, and we started with Shopify. And after about three months, and they were being successful, they'd sell out of whatever hundred units that they would order and, and then they'd move on to the next thing. I thought, hey, I'll try this. So I got into this as a part-time thing uh, for myself, for extra income and for some stability you know, outside of my consulting world. And um, I started uh, with Shopify with one store and started a drop shipping uh, environment. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So that's that's really how you got into it. So you got into it because of your sons, and now uh, uh, thanks to them, you sort of uh, you know got into it full time in the end. So it's a nice uh, nice way to get into it. Not the typical way like most of us. So uh, and a nice one. Thanks for sharing that with me. So look, the next thing I want to talk about is then obviously you use Shopify, you used that before. You made the uh, switch over to Commerce HQ and have uh, running a store now with that platform. You know what was the reason behind switching to Commerce HQ and uh, and using that platform? So um, a couple of things, ease of use and um, more of a fixed uh, cost every month for the feature sets that I use on a day-to-day -day basis for my store. Um, in addition, I do see a little bit of a higher percentage funnel rate um, through Commerce HQ, and that was one of the reasons I originally looked at it was uh, they were talking about they had a little better uh, throughput in their sales model that I wanted to try. Yeah, that's right. Right, yeah, and um, and what, what when you're saying about the uh, the cost as well? I mean, what was uh, what were you paying? You know, sometimes with uh, Shopify uh, in comparison to Commerce HQ. So before I shut down my Shopify stores, I was spending between three fifty and four fifty a month in fees, apps, and uh, base subscriptions for the two stores that I had. So it's quite. It's, uh, this is where a lot of people don't know. When people see Shopify, they see they've got the twenty nine dollars store plan, but there is there are other costs involved when uh, running an e commerce store, and that's one is the fees, obviously through uh, processing fees, and then also you've got the uh, the app fees as well, which can you know add up to quite a lot. So you know you know now through using Commerce HQ that the apps are all built in, they are free, and uh, you know and that's that's one of the great benefits around using Commerce HQ. So, yeah, and, w and when I started looking at Commerce HQ, uh, one of the reasons was the five or six apps that I use, that's what they had. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I find that's this is the thing with Commerce HQ. The guys who built it, John Mack and his uh, partner, they built the store um, because of their own experience using Shopify. They know what they wanted and, and what made a store convert better. So this is all built into Commerce HQ and, uh, and these are the stuff that people are loving when using the platform. So, so with you, what would you? Um, so, how are you finding actually using the platforms? You've been using it a while now. Do you find it, you know, all right, or have you had any problems with it? How are you finding using it? So, um, I, 
now I'm I'm fairly confident with it, and I use it on a daily basis, and I, I understand how it performs, and I understand how to use the features very well. Uh, in fact, I would I would go as far as to say that um, compared to Shopify, um, it, it's a simpler environment, so it allows me to get my things done quicker and move on to other things that help me make money. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the most important thing, isn't it? You don't want to be uh, bunged down trying to work out to use the platform, and uh, and like I'm telling you, I I am not tech savvy at all, not not really, and uh, and I find it very easy to use, and this is why you know I do a lot of tutorials in the end because I, I actually find it quite an easy platform to use, and if I can explain to people how to use it, I'm sure that other people can use it without any issues. So, nice one, man, nice one. So. Um, Look, talking about the platform, what kind of uh, conversion rates have you, you know, have you managed to get on a consistent basis? So my best month, I got a 4.8% conversion rate on average for the month uh, for my primary store in Commerce HQ. That was about a point and a half better than I ever got in Shopify for a longer term. Now, there were days, of course, that I got higher conversion rates. But from a, if you average out a month, I never came close to that with Shopify. Wow, that's amazing. And yeah, 5% is very, very good. I it's quite commonplace. When I see a lot of people sharing their successes with Commerce HQ, you see that a lot, a lot of 5%, a lot of 4%. And, uh, you know, that is very, very good. You know, you can't take that for granted. That's a, that's a very high conversion rate. So well done, man. That's a, you know, really good conversion rate. Um, so next thing, um, which I like to ask is, um, and this is just for the people who are, you know, you see people and they seem to be doing really well with e-commerce, but I like to know what's the challenges, what's the obstacles, what can people expect to experience when, you know, whether they're running a you know, normal kind of e-commerce store or a drop shipping store, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of obstacles have you experienced in just running an e-commerce store in general? So I'll give you three things. One was um, it takes time. It takes effort. It is not a click on this, publish it, and the money starts rolling in. There is effort involved, and there's a ton of learning. So if you're not familiar with e-commerce, uh, listen and read and understand uh, from people who have done this before. And you may only get one thing out of their video, but it's worth the time to watch that video. Um, the other issues that I've ran into, and, and this is specific to, as an example, PayPal, um, they decided that uh, as my store started ramping up, that they would freeze a lot of my assets um, and, and may require me to have, you know, like $30,000 uh, as a baseline in my account before they would start allowing me to use it. So obviously that puts you into a situation where you're trying to figure out where your money's coming from because you're, you're buying new inventory with that money and such they've frozen it. Uh, so those are the type of things that I've run into. Um, the other thing is consistency. You've got to be very consistent. You've got to be methodical and you've got to take the emotion out of it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, you know, it's good to hear that stuff. And uh, it's, uh, that's very real. And like the guest who I had on last, Adam, he's the exact same problem. You know, he had uh, PayPal freezing him when he was ramping up the uh, the turnover and then he had was struggling initially to get funds to pay for the products and, and all that kind of stuff so it's not without the challenges but you know you've got to push through that stuff and obviously just keep going and I, you know, and I like what you said it takes time it takes effort there's a learning curve of anything it's not just a matter of putting up a store and just making money it's a real real business and you need to obviously uh, you know put time and effort into growing that so you know just uh, coming off that question how did you manage to cope how did you managed to overcome these challenges because a lot of people that would have just been enough for them to uh, just to say oh this is it I can't do it no more you know there's one thing after another you know how did you manage to stay stay through it and just see it through so as an example with the PayPal issue, um, I spent a lot of time on the phone with them, uh, understanding why they were doing it and helping them understand that I wasn't a typical store that they had lumped me into that was going to have these high return rates and these um, the all these uh, people asking for their money back. And I was able to show them, you know, my history. Uh, and and it, it even wasn't just the PayPal history. It was uh, using Stripe and uh, uh, other um, processing uh, companies to show them that my returns were very negligible. And so they, they didn't release all of it, but they agreed to lower the amount. And so as an example, you know, it took me a week, but after that, I was able to free up enough funds to continue growing my business. Oh, so, you, you know, t it's tough, but you did it, man. So, you know, for the people listening, just, uh, you know, just 
do what needs to be done. Uh, you know, that one thing was, uh, you know, in front of you at the time and uh, just, you know, you'll get through it in the end. So and I'll commend you, man. That's, uh, you know, I would have uh, struggled, obviously, to, to be stuck in that situation. So, you know, just it's nice for, to hear that stuff so people can actually realise that there will be problems. They might not be as big as those problems or they, or right. they might be little, but that you're going to come across something, whatever that, those issues are. So let's get into a subscriber question. So I had a subscriber. He asked me a question to ask my next guest. Um, and his name is uh, Somba Shroud. So shout out to you for sending this question in. So his question was, it was, um, how long did it take you to find your first winning product? And, uh, and do you ever find that some products have su surprised you with their success? So... Um... It was almost exactly 30 products that I tried before I started getting one that on a day-to-day -day basis was selling and more, uh, you know, more people were getting, I was getting lots of visits. Um, it looked like an interesting product as far as the conversations that were happening around uh, the Facebook pages. Um, but it was right at 30. And, and, you know, it was one of those things where I was following the John Mack methodology. Um, and, you know, he has a specific amount of time that you allow these products to go before you cut them off. And I was following it along, following it along, going, God, I'm never going to find one. And just like he says it, it you won't even know when it happens it just happens and that's exactly what happened uh and then and then secondly um the products uh so i had a couple of products that i literally just listed on my website and i didn't advertise them i didn't do anything with them and suddenly people were buying them and, and i didn't understand even how they were finding them so um you know i started running a couple of ads from them and they turned out to be two of my best products over the summer so totally no no research on my part other than I had it on my side. And it just happened to sell and then you uh, sort of took the hint and started selling it and uh, done well. Exactly. Nice, man. Nice. And I like that. 30 products to, to test. I mean, that that's a determination there. And I see it a lot of other people and I'm, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to dig people out, but I see people who've tested five products, 10 products, and they're saying, I've tested loads of products. I'm not finding a winner. And and then that's the thing. I look at people who've, who've done really well with uh, e-commerce and they have tested a lot of products and some people have had massive failure or, or you I wouldn't even call it failure they've had a lot of feedback you know and testing products before they found the winner and for me to get for me to find my first product was done you know really really well I think I was close to that I mean I might be more than that. I think it was like 40 products and uh, and I, you know, I lost money up to that point and that, that 40th product or around that time was the one that made me my money back so you just got to stick through and it is quite scary I can see I can understand how people could be there and they're you know they're pumping money and they're testing products and uh, and they're not getting results straight away but you know, you'd be very lucky, I think, just to, to straight off the bat, you know, find that winner without understanding ads. Because I, I, when I look back as well, and I don't know if this is a situation with you, James, but you may be, you may be, sorry, you may have had a winning product or a product that had good potential before that 30th, but you just didn't see it yet. You know, I believe that I had products what probably were chances of actually being winners, but it's just the way I may have done my ads or or may or the way I target or whatever. It just may have been off, but really they probably had good potential if I was if I knew what I was doing in the earlier days with the ads. Do you know? What I, mean? I would agree with you. There was definitely some in that 30 that probably were really winners, but I didn't know how to market them effectively yet. I was still learning that part of the business. And that's the thing you said before. It takes learning and takes patience so so there you go so it's an example of that right there so we've only got a couple of questions left james so i'm going to wrap them up with uh with two questions so the question first question would be um what would you say is the biggest factor in uh, in your successes so far so uh being consistent following the methodology that you set up and uh you know cutting losers when it was time, you know, based on whatever metric you put together, if it hits that metric and it's not selling, it doesn't matter if you love it or you think it's the best product in the world. If it's not selling, it's not selling. You got to move on. Uh, and then uh, secondly, um, making sure, uh, to be honest, um, the best products I had were ones that I fulfilled myself in the United States and I did not ship from China. 
So that that may be different than your other guys, but that's what worked for me. That's your story, man, and that's it. Real people, real results is your story. So I mean, you you got products which were essentially drop shipping products, but you actually just input you just got a load shipped to you. So you, obviously you must have knew that they were selling, and then you what did you do? Just ship them into your house and ship then straight from you. So there you go. That's just it's good. You know, someone listening to this may you know get that moment where they think. I want to ramp this up and I want to have the uh, the, uh, the the extra boost in probably what it gives you in sales to say shit from the USA. So, yeah, nice one, man. Nice for sharing that with, uh, with us. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up with this question. So, can you give me a tip or get, sorry, not me, give our audience a tip or a piece of advice for new uh, aspiring newbie e-commerce or sorry, e-compreneurs, uh, on uh, you know what they could do better or just to help them in general when they're starting off so um, patience uh, consistency and uh, ignore shiny objects uh, you know one of the things that you run into is there's a hundred thousand people out there trying to get your attention for their way of doing it and their way of being successful uh, you can't listen to all of them so you've got to pare down the noise so that you can actually focus on your on your business and maybe you have three or five people that you follow that helps you get the basis of your business and that's what you do until you know it doesn't work basically um, I think it's a um, I think the the biggest problem that I ran into is there was 50 different ways to do this and it was hard to pick the right ones or the ones that worked for me yeah 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 exactly and I've, I've I'm guilty of that myself you know I've uh, very much uh, had shiny object syndrome in the past and for me the only time I've actually got any real traction is when I've just stuck with something and seen it through so I've got just a little bit of uh, traction and then I thought right I'm getting something now and I've just moved on with that without stopping moving on to the next thing and then getting no results again and then going in that you know that loop of just you know trying things and buying new products feeling good because I'm trying something new and not actually getting anywhere so yeah patience and sticking to to something to actually get results man so nice one mate I appreciate everything you shared that was a really great uh you know chat with you and uh for everyone listening if you uh if you want to know more like i said go in the description you can check out the links there and also if we're not friends yet why not hit subscribe uh drop a like and i will see you in another video so thank you james much appreciated my pleasure